Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of Pretty Aggressive. My name is Julia, I run Pretty Aggressive Recovery Coaching. I help people learn to thrive in this life because simply surviving is bullshit. I help people who have been raised with toxic, abusive, poorly bonded, or low nurtured parenting from their youth. And I help people build skills and develop coping mechanisms that are healthy ways for them to build resiliency in this life. Today's episode is going to be about meditation through movement. This is something that I struggled with uh, a lot growing up. Um, I, the environment that I was raised in created a lot of anger within me and I had a really hard time finding places to express that anger in a healthy way and sports activity and then in my adulthood going to the gym really helped me um, calm my mind and allowed me to find a place to express that energy in a healthy, productive way instead of a destructive, self-sabotaging or hurtful way to others and myself. One of the one of the biggest and most pervasive stereotypes about meditation is that we need to sit or be still for us to clear our minds, for us to find inner peace, for us to find enlightenment, for us to calm our mind and find stillness with our bodies and ourselves, and that this is the um, dominant way to achieve this, um, this Buddhist Zen state. And I struggled for years with sitting meditation. I tried it time and time again. And one of the reasons it was, I so uh, consistently gave up on it was because I was finding um, the ability to empty my mind or to be at peace or to find a state or a zone of healthy fluidity within my mind, my emotions, to let go of my ego, to release tension, release toxicity. I found it easier to do this through movement and sitting meditation wasn't something that was a path or a conduit for me to achieve that as easily as movement. So the argument could be made that you should challenge yourself to be able to sit and find that meditative state. But I believe that this is a wrong way to approach helping someone solve their own unique uh, issues or achieve their own unique heights or potential that it's the same as telling people that there's only one way to educate someone or there's only one way to train or there's only one way to eat to optimize your health that this stereotype that you need to challenge yourself to sit in stillness in order to achieve the most optimal state of meditation is another bullshit stereotype or framework that people try to shove everyone in and in in a open-minded state we should be communicating to people that whatever you need to do to reach your place of empty mind or meditative state or at peace with yourself and your environment um, and to be able to live outside your ego for moments in time that you should be able to do that in any way that one doesn't harm you or other people but any way that suits you and your body and your mind we are not all designed the same and i spent years trying to repetitively repetitively get into yoga and repetitively get into sitting meditation and the struggle uh, happened so often and so consistently that the failure started to eat at me until I was finally able to have support from other information, other research and other communities to understand that that just wasn't for me. And also in, in likeness of other ways to succeed, I started reading time and time again from highly successful people that their methods were unique to them and that we should set up our environment for our own personal optimized success. And if movement is a way that you feel more comfortable achieving a peaceful mind state to optimize your thinking in order to help your day become more successful, in order to um, 
heighten your awareness of yourself in order to sort through your issues and your problems, do that. Walking a path that someone else has carved and said, this is the path, this is the way, that is actually the opposite of true Buddhist training is that everyone has their own path and their own way and only you can walk yours only you can find it the people who find themselves the most successful and who are able to obtain that peace with themselves for a larger portion of their day are people who are burning and carving and bushwhacking their own path for themselves and i really encourage people who are struggling with putting a cookie cutter solution on top of their recovery, on top of their problems, on top of their struggle, that you start searching for the power and the support to find your own way. Because when I did, that's when my life started to 10X itself. That's when my life started to really blossom and my own potential started to grow at an exponential rate is when I trusted my own self and my own intuition to do things that optimized my own success in the unique way that suited me. So when I need to meditate, when I need to go from a toxic mind state to a healthy mind state, I need to move. I need to be in motion and I need to feel like I'm running towards something and leaving whatever I don't want behind me and to let it go. So that's today's pretty aggressive lesson to carve your own path. Don't allow people to encourage you to put cookie cutter solutions on your growth and your struggle and your change. And if you are struggling to sit and meditate, I encourage you to get moving, to get going. Um, and find find your comfort in your body find where you need to be because someone else's solution is not going to be the same for you and don't listen to the stereotypes because that stuff is comes from some truth but blanket statement blanket people don't be sheeple don't do that be yourself carve your own path Um, I know there's been particular situations where I've had a text message or someone's done something that's really hurt and angered me and my first reaction is to be angry and to respond in spite and vengeance and anger and fear and pain and as soon as I go for a 10 minute run I can come I can release all of that and think clearly and optimize how I approach my conflict resolution with someone, how I build a relationship, how I repair. And simply just that one application in life has shown me how much better my life can be if I find my unique way to meditate, if I find a way to have cathartic release, let go of my ego and have a bigger, better life and move forward with love, with appreciation, with gratitude, with abundance and with acceptance, fluid acceptance. So there you go. I hope all of you are having a great day and uh, find, find your release your own way. Don't fucking hurt people in the process. Make sure you have uh, um, willing participants and be one yourself, be a willing participant in your own life. Put out into the world what you wish to see. Love you all. <laughs>